Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Today's message is titled, Heavenly Rewards. Let no man take thy crown. So I wanted to share with you my recently published article over at Harbinger's Daily. So each time I have an article published, I like to come out and actually read through it with you guys. So if you go to harbingersdaily.com, I will put the link in the description box to my recently published article. But if you just go on there and type in, in the search icon, type in my name, Chad Thomas, you'll find all my uh, published articles on there. But I'm so grateful and thankful for my friends over at Harbingers Daily for editing and publishing these articles. Now, this is one that I just uh, had published that I think will encourage you guys greatly. Please share it. Uh, again, titled, Heavenly Rewards, Let No Man Take Thy Crown. So let's read it together. Again, this, the link will be in the description box. The Bible makes it very clear, no amount of good works can save you, and no amount of good works keep us saved. The good works should produce from our salvation. A new attitude towards sin should result from our salvation. Once you believe and put your faith and your trust in the gospel of your salvation— which is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. Once you believe and trust in the gospel of your salvation, a spiritual baptism occurs. You are baptized into the body of Christ. You can read about that in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. And the, uh, if you go to the article, you'll see you can click on the scripture references right there, folks. Once the Holy Spirit indwells you as a new believer, he begins a work in you, and he will continue to work in your life until the day of redemption. Philippians 1, 6, which says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We are all in different areas of our walk. We will never be perfect. We will make mistakes. We will fall. We will struggle. But we get back up, and we keep pressing forward. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, King James Version, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Titus 3, 5, King James Version, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Romans 4, 5-7, King James Version. But him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. When I was a captain and college ice hockey player at Penn State University, nothing I did made me not part of the team, but I wanted to be the best, not because it made me better than anyone else on the team, but because I wanted to win and make my coach proud. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? It should. Remember what the Apostle Paul said. In the book of 1 Corinthians 9.24, King James Version, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. So although our works don't save us or keep us saved, Jesus has called us unto good works. Once you are baptized into the body of Christ, we are all on the same team. We have a job to do. If you are saved at the time of the rapture, all of us will go to something known as the judgment seat of Christ. This is also known as the Bema seat. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, King James Version, the Apostle Paul says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good 
or bad. The purpose of the judgment seat of Christ is not to punish believers. Your sin debt was paid in full on that cross at Calvary. Rather, the purpose of the judgment seat of Christ is to reward believers for their faithful service. I don't know about you, but, what, but I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. The bima is a tribunal for awards. The judgment seat is translated as court or tribunal. In the large Olympic arenas, there was an elevated seat where the judge would sit. After the contest and the events were over, the competitors would gather to receive their rewards or crowns. Likewise, our lives as Christians are a race. At the end of this race, when we all stand before the judge, God, at the judgment seat, we will be rewarded for our faithful service. In the New Testament, we can see five specific crowns that, that can be given at the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ. Let us go through them together. The first crown I want to talk about is the crown of glory. This is a crown for faithful shepherds. In 1 Peter 5, 4 King James Version, we read the following. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. This crown will be given to those who have served Jesus Christ, ministering to his flock. Those whose tireless efforts were to reach a Christ-rejecting world, uh, protect, the, protect from wolves of false doctrine, and diligently feed his sheep with the word of God will be rewarded. Crown number two, also known as the crown of rejoicing or the soul winner's crown. In 1 Thessalonians 2.19 King James Version, we read, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ it is coming? This crown will be given to those who have won others to faith in Jesus Christ. The third crown, known as the incorruptible crown, also known as, it's basically a crown of victorious lives of purity. In 1 Corinthians 9, 25 King James Version, the Apostle Paul says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. This crown will be given to those who exercise spiritual discipline. Those who are victorious in their daily spiritual struggle will receive an incorruptible crown. The fourth crown, known as the crown of righteousness, this is a crown for those who love his return. 2 Timothy 4.8, King James Version. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. This crown will be given to those who are watching, waiting, and longing for our blessed hope. We are commanded to be watchful and vigilant in Scripture. We should be expecting the Lord to return at any moment, but at the same time, occupying and redeeming the time as if it's years from now. And then finally, the fifth crown, known as the crown of life, a crown for those who have suffered for his sake. Revelation 2.10, King James Version, we read, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. James 1.12, King James Version, reads the following, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. This crown will be given to all those who have suffered and were given their lives for Christ's sake throughout the entire church age. Every generation has suffered persecution, trials, and martyrdom for their faith in Jesus Christ. But Jesus has promised that the to them, the crown of life, that should be immensely encouraging. This article is not written to make anyone feel bad about themselves. Again, if you are saved, you are going to heaven. This is simply to encourage all of us to redeem the time we have left before the rapture of the church. There is a whole world lost right now in looking for answers. It is not our job to save them, but it is our job to plant the seeds and let God provide the increase in his timing. We are all part of the team the body of Christ, but let us strive for the crowns to lay down at our King's feet because he is worthy of all honor, praise, and glory. I'm going to finish with Revelation 3, 10 to 11. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast with thou hast, that no man 
take thy crown. I hope this encourages you all. I hope this encourages all of you as we await our blessed hope. Let us redeem and occupy the time while there is still time left. Keep looking up. God bless you all.